There's always that awkward moment after starting a stream when you don't really know when to actually start. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. Either you start too early or you have to like just stare at the camera waiting for it to start. <laughs> waiting for people to come in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see where Oh there it is. Yeah, it should have popped up now. I accidentally closed the window just then. I got to pop out the chat as well. Okay, so I get, that's probably because um this is probably because you probably started the old stream and just renamed it, but it says it has 149 likes, and there's no way that happened. And that should yeah, no, up. that's just the old stream. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn turn off the audio because that's annoying to hear that echo. Can you hear yourself in it though? Yeah, yeah, it sounds fine. Oh, see, okay, that's cool. Where's my chat? Okay. Uh, how is that? All right, two watching now. I'll tweet it out. Yes. I don't know what that'll do. Let's leave the all forge like background. <laughs> yeah, I know it's pretty cool. I saw yeah. that. How's it going, guys? Awesome. This is a impromptu stream with CJ printing, and yeah, we are going to be looking at a few Kickstarter projects and sharing our thoughts, which I thought could be cool. So, for those who don't know who you are, CJ, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi. Uh... I'm uh, CJ Printing. I run a YouTube channel called CJ Printing. Uh, you can check me out. Uh, yeah, not as cool as Angus, but uh, I'm 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 getting there. Uh, yeah, so go subscribe. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CJ <laughs> does some really cool stuff. And he's um, you just got the Wen How at the moment, hey? Just the Wen How. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'll probably do some videos on the um, what's it called? The um, Rostock Max V2. But school we'll probably do some videos on that in the summer and stuff. Yeah, uh, so we basically chose a few pr Kickstarter projects to go out because, I mean, we had the Olo. I mean, everyone knows our thoughts on the Olo. <laughs> we had the Trinus. Yeah. Um, and then there's this one that everyone was talking about. They're like, what do you think of the All Forge? Um, <laughs> I don't know, have you had a, a look at it at all? I mean, <laughs> their yeah. website's pretty sparse on information. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of things about the All Forge, not all are positive, and some are just, mm. I have no idea, but, you know. Yeah, it's a bit like, it's uh, just... well, they're, they're advertising it as like, you know, this this manufacturing thing that's supposedly much faster than 3D printing, and it, by the looks of it, it's basically a desktop injection molding machine, which mm -hmm. is cool, uh, but what's interesting is they announced they're going to be on Kickstarter, and they're not. Like, they were going to be on Kickstarter on the 1st of May, and they never made it there, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is yeah. a little bit interesting. So they're doing pre-orders through their own website. If you go to their website, you can pre-order a Allforge. Which is, I don't know, I don't know if, I probably pressed it, even if I was interested in getting one, I, I wouldn't pre be pre-ordering it now, just because we've seen f too close to nothing on this machine. Yeah. I mean, it, they've got a prototype by the looks of it. It looks like... You know, yeah. the beefy Stefan motor, all that sort of stuff. But then they're talking about 3D printing molds, and I don't, you can't injection plastic into a 3D printed plastic yeah. mold. Yeah. Um, it's actually, it's actually not metal. Like, you're talking about metal, too. It's like, that's impossible. Yeah, yeah, unless you actually make a metal mold, in which case, who's going to yeah. afford to do that? <laughs> yeah. And then it suddenly becomes a little bit slower <laughs> than making a 3D print, which they're comparing it against. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they've supposedly gotten 191,000 of their 100,000 gold. But again, it's on their own website. I don't know why they just abandoned Kickstarter at the last minute. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Maybe they didn't. I guess they wouldn't want to pay that extra fee, but I feel like they get more, a, lot more, a lot more popularity than what that fee would cost. Well, you get a lot more. I mean, there's still scams on Kickstarter, but you get a lot more sort of gen. Like, it, it becomes more genuine, and you get yeah. you know, that push out to the community as well. But yeah. At the though, same time, it, it yeah. something being on Kickstarter doesn't really make it valid, but that is still, you know, true. Yeah. So how, how much are they selling for? It's, um... Yeah. This is this is what I like. It's on their website. It says, um, excuse me. <clears throat> it says, yeah, like three D printing. Average creation time six hours, and then all forge average creation time four minutes, but. You have to make the mold first, <laughs> which they're yeah. not counting in. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's literally just probably cooling time, you know, just... Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's alright, dude. If you need to go do homework, by all means, go do homework. Yeah, so Steven's asking Kickstarter didn't approve them uh, with a question mark. I it looks like they did. Could be fast. It's, I would say that's probably, probably likely if they didn't get approved. Um, yeah. Because I don't see why they would... I mean, this project would get millions on Kickstarter because people would just go nuts over it. I just because of what it is, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Is honestly, it's like they could be a hundred percent valid. You know, the most wholesome company in the world, not telling a single lie. But the thing is, is like <laughs> this is a very unbelievable technology. You know, even if it is real, and at the same time. So is FDM 3D printing, you know, a few years ago, but still, it's just, I don't know, I, I just, there's really nothing they can say that will, that will really make me 100% believe them, just because it's so new. Yeah, well, that's uh, it. I mean, injection molding's been around for a while, but desktop injection yeah. molding's a whole Yeah, different. desktop injection molding's unheard of. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just assume it works, though. Who really yeah. has a use for pumping out, like, okay, you 3D print one thing, and it's kind of like a little useless trinket, like, let's say this... This, this my look thing who needs like a hundred of these I <laughs> like you can print a companion cube and then you could have a thousand companion yeah. cubes in metal yeah 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 uh, um, uh, don't worry Alex we'll be getting to the poly smooth polisher very shortly We're going oh to yeah that thing is cool yeah. I've seen that but um yeah I, I, I can understand it for people who want to do batch manufacturing like maybe they're making quadcopter parts and they want to make a lot of custom things yeah, I get it for business and things like that, but there's really no practicality in a home or really even YouTube setting. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll bump up my gain, Zach. How's that? <laughs> I just ramped up my gain. I probably, I'm probably deafening CJ now through Skype. No, you're fine. <laughs> no, I'm oh, good? Okay. Yeah. I can go a little higher, but I don't want to uh, peak on my I microphone. can go quieter. I can like, bring the mic farther from my mouth or something. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, basically with the Allforge... It supposedly does candies as well, which is yeah, that's cool. I like it for that. Like chocolate, uh, I could see that. I could see that actually being a legitimate use for it, um, like yeah. actually making chocolates and customizing them, and then pumping yeah. out. Yeah, I could so see that as, as like a store sending them an STL file, and then like a day later, just coming in and picking up it in like chocolate or gummy form. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So interesting. Um, Where's the price list? Sorry. I think they're all the half, all the 50% off ones were sold out. Uh, here, yeah, they got three yeah. versions. They got the sweet one that does cho that does chocolate and lollies. They got the startup one that does supposedly uh, ABS, PLA, nylons. And uh, then they got the boss, which says it can do metal, which I think is a bit iffy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in terms of their, their actual shop it's a very nice website it's very flash yeah it's a bit hard to navigate though I legit can't find this shop anymore where is it gone I wonder if they'll send if, if it'll be thinking it would be worth it for them to send it to a YouTuber like just like if Joel gets one of these <laughs> yeah it'd be funny if Joel gets one of these actually oh my god <laughs> Speaking of, actually speaking of Joel, did you find it interesting how with the Taz 6, he was really careful with um, making his video to not show it, and then suddenly all these like no-name YouTubers had Taz 6s and they were making videos? Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh. And they were all like breaking the embargo <laughs> about showing it off. Yeah. Oh, that's this guy. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to turn on a light. One sec. That's right. Oh, here we go. Here's the price lists. So, I think they've sold out... Oh, no. Interesting. So, the, the sweet ones, still, you can get at half price, which is 2000 bucks, which is... Yeah. Eh, That's a lot. It's a lot of cash. A lot of cash for it is. Yeah. I mean, the Glowforge, the, the best Glowforge you can buy, I think, is like eight grand, like with all the bells and whistles and everything. Yeah, right. And if this is real, I'd rather I'd rather this than a Glowforge, really. But yeah, yeah. Well, it, uh, if you're again, if you're making lots of figurines and things, this would be cool. And if you're making the chocolate chocolate stuff, it'd be cool. 
But again, I think it's like yeah. 3D printing is a niche market. I think this is like an even more niche market. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, almost kind of like a Venn diagram. I think it covers less of the total 3D printing maker community, but I think it it's more has more of industrial applications. Mm. I think. Yeah, I I reckon a lot of hacker spaces will buy them, and then probably promptly break them. Yeah, because that's what hacker space people do. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Okay, do not should we move on to the another one? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Unlikely creators asks if uh, Pyro Design could do a logo for you. Yeah, I've been talking to a Pyro. He's an awesome cool. dude. So uh, maybe I haven't I haven't actually. Uh, asked him to do it but I'm sure he'd be cool with it I've actually been thinking of making I need a big logo somewhere in the back of the set so I've been thinking of getting a uh, laser cut stainless steel like offset yeah. logo and putting lights behind Ooh. it that'd be, cool. that'd be pretty sick uh, yeah. unfortunately moving from Perth though that's where all the laser cutting is and it's really cheap there so to mm -hmm. do it here is going to be more expensive so I might just go on when I go there to visit I'll just get it done and then bring it back in my luggage or something yeah I don't know I um and the cool thing about uh, about Travis of Pyro Design, he uh, he he's so skilled in so many different like things with modeling and different things like that. So he can there's really nothing in that like kind of logo he couldn't do. He could do like laser cutting or he yeah. did ZBrush and then he also does parametric and it's it's pretty cool. He's yeah. he's very widely he's talented. He's super talented. Like he's painting yeah. skills up awesome. When I showed oh, when yeah. I saw uh, Joel's logo what he made with, with the, the 3D printed part at the top. I was like, oh, he's just stuck an extruder on there. And I looked closely yeah. and I'm like, oh, wait, it's 3D printed. Yeah. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And he said he, like, combined, like, the idea, like, the look of, um, like, the G-Max, the mm. Flash Forge, and the Ultimaker printhead. Yeah, all which in one, cool. which is sweet. Yeah, he's super talented. He's going to go far. And he's oh, on yeah, Patreon definitely. now, which is awesome. So all of you mm. guys, if you want to support him. He's somewhere. I'm not gonna. I can't link it. <laughs> somewhere <laughs> on Patreon. Um, yeah, sweet. So uh, that's the China. I'm not gonna look at that one right now. I'm gonna go Polymaker. This one. Righto. Cool. So the Polymaker, Polysmooth, and Polisher has heaps of people excited, and mm. a little bit of background for people who don't really know about vapor smoothing like that was one of my first videos i ever did was like an acetone vapor smoothing yeah, with a rice that. cooker i mean it still works but it's just super mm. dangerous because yeah. <laughs> acetone's like pretty volatile and it's not the best solvent it's not the worst but it's not very good so the yeah. idea of this thing is it's a non-heat source so it, it like uh nebulizes like tiny droplets of alcohol mm -hmm. and then it melts that surface with like yeah. this plastic is affected by alcohol mm -hmm. and i think i think duplicate you said last time it was a pvb polyvinyl buta something i have forgotten what it actually was but uh yeah that's really cool so apparently i've been talking to some injection molders in uh china sorry not injection molders uh, filament makers and apparently this is a legit thing it's a real it's it's used not very commonly yeah. but it's quite expensive to extrude Apparently they need, need a different type of nozzle on their extruding, extruding machines. But yeah, what do you reckon? Uh, this is pretty awesome. One one downside is you do have to buy their filament. Yes. Or yeah, yeah it's not. Is it like is it like a patented blend or is it like a type of filament? I at the moment I, I'm thinking it's just a type of plastic, like a maybe a plastic yeah. blend. But they're not telling anyone what it is, obviously. Um, yeah. I but, feel like once it comes out, there's probably going to be some Chinese manufacturer producing it for 10, 15 bucks less. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know? So but the, the main 35 thing is bucks, the unit, I think. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, like, 35 bucks, I think that's, um, is that for a kilogram spool? Because that's for a kilogram spool. That's, that's not bad. That's not insane or anything. No, it's, um, for a spool that's 750 grams, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, that's not insane, but it's more than I'd personally spend for my everyday spool. And this this print is it's not gonna be your everyday print anyway. So mm -hmm. you know, it's not like you need every single print looking injection molded. No, no, that's it. And I think the the one thing that people are a little bit upset about is the fact you have to buy the polisher with the filament. You can't just buy the filament. They've sort of uh, you notice in their their pledges, it you have to, it starts with the hunt like two hundred bucks. You have to buy the polishing unit. You can't just buy yeah. the filament. <laughs> mm -hmm. which sort of makes sense on their end but it's a little bit cheeky yeah 
There's some more. Yeah. So it looks pretty sick. Like the the photos look pretty awesome. Does. Yeah. And it just uses standard like icy purple al- uh, yeah, alcohol. Yeah, yeah, it's just standard uh, ethanol. Which so that's good. I was worried that you have to order some like patented chemical or something like that to use it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's it. It's there's been you know the amount of times I get asked about people wanting to smooth like PET with various <laughs> extremely exotic <coughs> solvents. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's it's just not yeah. worth it. Uh, Jerry, uh, uh, Barnacles, he said that PLA, you know, obviously it only worked with certain non, like, not very detailed parts. He said PLA will wet sand glossy. Yeah. So, I'd like to try that at some point. If you use fine enough sandpaper, it would, I reckon. Yeah. I mean, there is ways to smooth PLA using, uh, tetrahydrofluorin, which is, <laughs> if you think ac- ac- uh, acetone was, sol- was, uh, volatile. This THC, oh. is, whatever it is, is like even more so volatile. Um, but I have used it in the past as a glue for a, for PLA parts, which works really well. Mm-hmm. Um, it does make explosive peroxides, though, if you leave it oh. too long in the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This machine, this machine is a bit of a step up from uh, boiling uh, acetone in a rice cooker though it is it's massive step up I mean (laughs) but although having said that you're still making a fuel air mixture you're still putting a solvent in an air mix so yeah but to be fair this machine is built to boil this stuff it's not like or to create vapor of this stuff it's not you know rice cooker isn't so (laughs) I think it'll be a little bit better controlled um you know I'm sure they don't want to get sued you don't want to get injured so they're not gonna do anything that they don't think that they think will work. So, you'll def- the safety will be better, but still, just like any high-end machinery, you got to be careful. Yeah, I reckon so. I, I, one of my main concerns with this project is uh, the sorry, the Australian import laws and stuff are just so so nanny state about everything. I reckon they'd see this as a massive fire hazard. So I'm a bit worried yeah. about that. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, they got twenty days to go. Three hundred thousand dollars raised, mm-hmm. which is pretty good, and but not as big as the other, which one that China's so far. Yeah, and the price of the filament isn't really the issue. Like I'm, if I need a print, I'm fine paying that much for a print that would look that good. Uh, but the thing is, you are limited to only that type of filament, and really, who knows how it'll print? You know. Yeah. Well, like, they're saying it prints well. But then you don't know yeah. how strong it is, what its temperature resistance is, till you actually get it. Yeah. And then you've got this unit thing that you spent 200 or whatever dollars on that you might not ever use again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Like, this this is the kind of thing, and like pretty much all Kickstarter projects, it's the kind of thing that if I would ever purchase it, I'm personally going to at least wait until, the, until it's released. You know, yeah. I kind of need to see it. Yeah. Definitely, I'd be the same. I mean, I'm in I'm in contact with with Polymaker, and they they do good filament. Like they're not just a random new company; they make Polymax. Yeah, they've they've made other yeah they've made other filaments in the past. So it's not like you won't trust them. They're de- this is definitely real. It's not fraud or anything. No, no. So just, it's just a utility thing again. So again, maybe like like the old forge. You know, assuming it works, it's the utility of would you actually use it? Would you use it to polish parts? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if I was doing it for a client, but then mm-hmm. it's very part specific, I suppose, as well. Yeah, I feel. I mean, it's it's probably pretty. I think it could do most parts. You know, it's, I don't think, but like it's you really don't need to. I can't think of many prints that I'll be doing that I would really need to, like, except for like show pieces and stuff. Like, um, I don't know something I would show on my channel or I would be selling to someone. Yeah. Other than that, I really wouldn't have a whole lot of use for it personally but it's still a very cool thing that i would definitely try if i had access yeah. to it something um just just off a bit of a tangent which is interesting when when i was working with a uh, another print studio another one um we went we had a booth and we used to polish parts to show customers like at the booth and we found that if you didn't polish them and you left the lines on they actually were perceived more valuable because they could see them that they were 3d printed <laughs> Whereas if you polish them, yeah. they just they just look like three D printed. They, no, they just look like injection molded crap, plastic. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the thing is like um, you do actually. I'm, I'm sure you probably noticed this. You like say 
I don't know, like, this is a MTG Magic the Gathering like, life counter thing. Uh, this has, like, numbers on it. I feel like if you melted that, then the numbers wouldn't be as fine. It wouldn't be as exact. No, you lose detail. It, it all yeah. sort of merges together. Yeah, bit. it's kind of like if you imagine, like, a, like a low-poly uh, like file, and mm. then you smooth it out. It kind of looks worse. Just yeah, because it's yeah. less accuracy. Yeah. Um, and also, like, 3D printed, like... I like seeing, I weirdly like seeing the layers. Like, I like seeing that it's 3D printed, it's, like, satisfying, it's cool to see that, you know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, well, I, I, I did, like, a little uh, death claw head just yesterday using a gold filament, and it kind of, you know, in Mad Max, they've got the steering wheel with the, the, the metal wire that kind of looks like it's been 3D printed. Have you seen that? Have you seen that? Uh, no. Oh. I've, I, the new one, I, I'm not sure. I think I see part of it, but I've no. Oh, okay, seen it. no. There's a, there's it's an awesome movie, but there's there's got the steering wheel which has been wire wire wound to make this sort of skull. It's amazing, um, but yeah, like the print kind of looked like that. I was like, ah, oh, okay, yeah. ideas. <laughs> but um, cool. that looks cool. <laughs> when you see, when you can see how something's made, it adds value to it. I think. Yeah, that is very cool. And this. I guess you're also kind of paying for safety for, for this. You know, there are ways of doing this that are far less safe. Oh, and God, I, yeah. it, you, you do not, don't boil acetone in a rice cooker at a uh, sixth grader's makerspace. You know, like, don't even do that at, at college or, you know, I mean, even at a, even a professional grade. It's like, that's something that you do if you're, um, I don't want to say the word stupid, but like if you, I mean, you know, it's not it's not the safest thing in the world. So no. like, I would not be comfortable doing that. I, you know, it's just no. And the, the thing is, there's even there's been units coming out of China which are literally just heavier duty, heavier duty, uh, sort of basically rice cookers, and they call them like print mm -hmm. smoothers. And they're just sort of stainless steel yeah. baths which heat up. Um, yeah, and it's like yeah, it's still not safer it's still the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I don't know if the i really don't know if the if the or the uh the quality like like at the like, acetone smooth abs looks really really good i don't know how much the quality will really increase like i don't know if, it, if it'll look a lot better or if it's just safer and more practical yeah. easier to do <laughs> oh yeah mad max is r-rated sorry i forgot about that <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's fine I'm, yeah <laughs> it is pretty violent but it's an awesome movie um, yeah, cool. Uh, should we check out another one? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I forgot the list I sent you. Um, what else was uh, this? I think I still have it. The, like, there was the, um, um, the, like, the desktop vacuum former. Uh, there's the form box? Yeah, the form that's, box. That's what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, that's worth having a look at, because that's kind of in the same vein as the, the Allforge. Mm-hmm. They all have the same sort of name, yeah, and they all have the same kind of <laughs> video. I mean, I was talking to the guy who ran the China's campaign, and basically, people spend upwards of ten thousand dollars on their Kickstarter videos now. They get professional yeah. crews in, they get professional actors, free fans, <laughs> and it's like far out. And he reckons for the Olo campaign, they probably spent like a hundred thousand dollars in in PR marketing for that campaign. Probably. Yeah, I mean, it was worth it. They got tons more money back, but yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so this one, just a quick uh, overview of it. Essentially, it's, an, it's a vacuum forming tool. So what you do is you get like a sheet of plastic and it, it gets warmed up. You put an object mm -hmm. underneath it called the buck uh, and it sort of sucks down the plastic and the vacuum you attach to it. You just attach your standard household vacuum, supposedly, and it sucks the plastic down around the shape. So... They're, they're showing it doing like a banana there, <laughs> which is pretty funny. That is, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I used to use these all the time in, in, uh, in industrial design because it's super yeah. fast to make parts. The only thing mm -hmm. is you've got super big limitations in terms of what's called uh, draft angle. So you imagine you have like a sphere and you vacuum form over it. The plastic goes around it and then sets and then you, you can't get the ball out of it anymore because it's set around the ball. Yeah, that's true. So it kind of has to be, I mean, like, I would imagine even like a 90 degree angle, like a cube. You probably do a cube, you know, but anything you less than 90. 90. You can't do 90. You need to do... You can't um, do 90. No, yeah, you see, you are severely limited yeah. on this, but it's still so cool. How's, like, the accuracy on it? Like, does it seem to work pretty pretty well? 
Yeah, yeah, it does work pretty well. Uh, you can get sort of crinkling in the plastic. I mean, the plastic does need to form itself nicely and reliably. So you can get some crinkling around certain pinch points, like, again, like a cube. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, they're yeah. showing here, like, a really nicely designed shape, which has nice draft angles. And that, see that you can see it, it sort of sucks down around it. And they're showing it using that, which yeah. is pretty neat. I mean, you end up with a really super light, quite strong uh, shape using this yeah. technology. So cool. Yeah, Alex in the chat saying it's good for helmets. It is awesome for helmets because you end up with super mm-hmm. thin shapes that are really, really light, but then you can paint them up. Um, that's good for that. But I'm just mm-hmm. wondering with this one, it's, it's saying it uses your household vacuum, but... I mean, in my experience, you need a pretty strong vacuum force to, to work in. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'll think it'd be at least like a, a shop vac or something like that. But I mean, and also, I don't know about compatibility with different people's vacuums. Like everyone's vacuum is going to work with it. I don't know how that yeah, would work. But yeah. I reckon shop vac would be good. And they, they show a shop vac in the video. But yeah. like, you know, your standard household dinky little Dyson thing, I think that's got no chance. I think it'll probably yeah. overheat and blow up. <laughs> yeah, like we have this one where you like you like plug it into the wall and then it uses like this, this giant thing in the basement that sucks. I think that would work, you know, but something like just like I don't know, I don't see this working with all vacuums. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I reckon yeah, shop vac would be the way to go, I reckon. Yeah. Um And I'm sure it doesn't have to be a shop, I'm sure it could be, you know, a strong home vacuum, but like still it's just there's no every vacuum would every vacuum would work. No. You know. But yeah, so they show it's a still very cool. There. I like the idea of it. Like you said, there are limitations, but it's there's also things that you can do with it that you can't do with you know three D printing and things like that. So mm. yeah, yeah, plenty of things that you can't do. With, so yeah, that's 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 the kind of vacuum I would I would say definitely you'd have to use. But. Yeah, I think um, another thing they they show you can use three D printing to make your your sort of form, but in my experience, PLA depending on how they've designed it, because you need to heat up that sheet to be really pliable. Um, I found that the PLA tends to get softened by the, at the ambient temperatures. So mm. you tend to have to go something more like ABS or a high temperature plastic to get a, a, like a form that won't collapse in on itself. So it'd be interesting to yeah. see how they ch- tackle that. I mean, they've got the top, the heat element really far away, which is pretty good. So maybe that fixes sure. it. Um, yeah. Uh, what are they? What are they charging for? That's a good point. Let's have a squiz. So they're charging, yeah, three fifty, three fifty. Yeah, is that early bird? Or is that just regular? That seems to be regular. I, I think early bird's yeah. gone. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I'd imagine, but. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'll, that's yeah. not insane. That's not like. That's not terrible. You know, but mm. that's that's pretty cool. The thing I haven't is, seen anything like this yet, at least not on like a simple desktop setting. No, yeah. I mean, people have been making them for years, especially prop makers. I mean, yeah, like it's, it's something you can actually knock together pretty easily using heating elements and yeah, just again a vacuum. But they've designed it in a way that makes it look attractive and easy to use by the looks of it. Mm-hmm. Um, another, another small thing is there's a lot of waste through using this process because the you know, you've got one shape, all of that outside plastic's mm-hmm. not reusable. You have to get rid of it. That's what I was noticing. Yeah, it's like, and I wonder, like that, that, that gift right there that where she's using just that, that thin plastic sheet. I'm sure that's not too insane, but like I saw like the banana one. I think it was thicker, and it's <clears> like I don't. It seems pretty impractical, like to for a lot of things, but for molds that you're going to use a lot. Yeah. And also, yeah, it's just. Yeah. Well, mm. as you increase the sheet thickness, you need a lot more pressure. Sorry, a lot more suction to make it work. Um, mm. I mean, I used to try to do two and a half mil thick sheets, millimeter thick sheets, but this is a yeah. big, big vacuum form. And that would be like, you'd have to super heat them up to really, really pliable. Like you'd touch them, they'd be like rubber and then you'd suck them down. Um, but then you're, you're limited even more on shape because it doesn't conform nicely to sharp edges and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a pretty cool project. I mean, there's a lot of, there's That's a lot of cool. these miniature tools coming out i think <laughs> like uh i think people are just sort of going into their their local sort of uh sort of manufacturing shops and going like okay that's a injection moldy i'll make a desktop version that that's a vacuum former you know <laughs> we'll probably start seeing you know designer lathes and i don't know mills and 
presses, who knows. Yeah, all these things that, you know, needed to be in, like, super cool, giant, you know, multi-million dollar factories you're going to see on your desk now, which I think is very cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so just in the chat, Alex is saying the tricky part's getting the cool temp in the ov- on the oven and the train. Um, it, it is really difficult to isolate the temperatures. Usually, the machines I've seen have, like, a massive slider, so you've got, like, an oven, and then you slide the sheet over to the vacuum area. So that they've tried to do it by raising it up, but it'd be interesting to see how well it works in practice. Yeah. Yes, there was a desktop five axis CNC mill. Um, so yeah, it would have been CNC on Kickstarter a while ago. I don't think that succeeded though. I think in terms of practicality, uh-huh. someone's asking about a five axis. Not many. Yeah, that's where it like that. can move to the side. Yeah, yeah. So like. you, you get you get the X Y Z, and then you get tilts, tilt axes. So you get um, mm-hmm. either rotational or. Well, yeah, you get rotational and then tilt. So you can do the sides yeah. of things, undersides of things. Uh, and that fixes my, my number one problem with C, with CNC milling is is that it's that one thing. You know, so that would... And I've been thinking about it. Like, sure, that would be awesome, but the practicality is, is questionable, you know. Yeah, it's how many people need that. Not many. Have you so. seen the, uh, the 3D printers that can move on, uh, like, all around it? Have you seen this? No. <laughs> oh, so it's like, it's like a slope. So imagine, like, I don't know... Um, you know what, like a like a skate park kind of uh, ramp would look like, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the way it works is like this robotic arm can won't do it layer by layer. It'll like just keep moving up the ramp. It'll keep like okay. It's like this robotic arm. It's it's pretty cool. It's kind of hard to explain. That's I'll send you a video or something. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Do it for the next next chat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Uh, I think there was maybe two more or one more. Um, I think there's one. There was a. Uh, a Delta. Uh, yeah, polygon, it was... I think. The Polygon 3, yeah, Polygon yeah. 3. So this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, so, when people sent this through to me, I was kind of like, mm, it doesn't look that impressive. It's just... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is not, I don't know what there really is to talk about on it, but it's it's made by one guy, which is pretty Yeah, cool. it's made by one guy. The, I think the, the one thing I think is interesting about it is the fact he has limited his pledges so this campaign is done mm-hmm. like it's all it, all the pledge levels are, are full up and he's not accepting yeah. anymore because he knows his limits mm-hmm. so he's pretty, pretty much saying yeah campaign re- rewards are filled so he's he's done what he wanted to do he's got the cash he needed and he's got his limits yeah. so he's just gonna go do it it's pretty cool it's like i, I like seeing stuff like this because like, this one guy who had an idea and just you know wanted to yeah, I think that's very cool. Um, I it seems promising. I don't really know what they're for the build area and for it being a delta for five hundred dollars. It's pretty cool. I think. Yeah, yeah. I I don't quite understand the if you look at the picture, he's got the extruder like hanging off the print head or something. Yeah. <laughs> which sort of demonstrates to me he's run into the classic issue that deltas have, which is the uh, the Bowden tube is too long. So. Yeah. When you're trying to do retracts and things, it's just there's too much length of plastic between the extruder. Mm. So it's insane. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think that's an issue. <laughs> but, yeah, I think it'll be cool if someone found a way. Like, all you have to do is really is just have like maybe some so um, maybe some like threaded rod and like a th- and like a thing on top of it, and that holds the, that holds the extruder, and each it could just like move up and follow it, so yeah. you wouldn't have the weight, and you would get to that's a move it. Idea. But that would one thing I would think you might run into is with that moving up and down, you might run into filament tangling, but it, it moves so slowly, I don't, like, up the ZX, I don't think you really would, but... Yeah, I think I don't know. the problem with the deltas, though, is that they, they sort of move around the whole bed, like... Um, they do, yeah, like, yeah. it's it's pretty crazy. It's nuts. Like, they, uh, for it to go to, to one corner, one of the arms has to go, like, way up, and it's... Yeah, and I feel like the arms would tangle with it if that if you try that. Okay, Duplicat saying the flying extruder works really good on these Rostock Max too. That's pretty cool. It's, it's the first time I've seen that implementation. Yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah, we're what we're saying is there's nothing too special about it. We're just interested mm-hmm. in the fact that he's actually known his limits and mm-hmm. canned the amount of uh, pledges. But apart from that, I mean, how much is he, he did it for? Five hundred dollars. Five hundred bucks for a kit. That's actually pretty cheap. That is for, good for that. Yeah, but there's nothing really special. It about is a kit, it. like assembled. I mean, I think a lot, well, yeah, a lot more people will be talking about it if it was assembled. Like that's it makes it a lot more expensive typically. Um, but 
still i if i was in the market for a 3d printer i would i would i think it'd be worth it to spend the extra hundred dollars for uh something of this size depending on the print quality yeah. you know over a one now but yeah. i don't I, know i think I also it wasn't such a huge smash hit because he did his own video as well so it's it's a pretty <laughs> average video <laughs> but yeah no oh, well he did what he needed to do so that's pretty neat uh, someone mentioned Printerbot CNC. I've not heard of that. I have not heard of that at all. Is it, is it a Kickstarter project? I will. Uh, have well, Printerbot is a pretty big company. Yeah, so I, I haven't heard of their CNC. Uh, Jeez, how long ago? Yeah, how long no, ago it looks, was that? looks like it's a, a thing. That's no, that's oh, is pretty it? cool. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> I could not imagine a Printerbot actually. <sighs> it's not on Kickstarter. Oh wow! It's okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Looks a bit like a shop bot, but they've um, just adapted it for their design. Yeah. Same sort of movement design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. That looks promising. Yeah. I um, the thing is, I don't. I mean, I've never seen it. It's cool that I know that now, but I don't see anything insanely special about it. No. You know, but I've heard the X carve is cool, but it's like it's like too much to deal with. Like it's too insane. Uh, I mean. I I used to have a CNC for a while and it was using a brushless motor for the cutter and the thing people do not understand about CNCs is the noise they make is okay this one has a router on it routers are loud like stupidly loud imagine that running Mm -hmm. for a good a good cutting session would be two hours or something yeah like (laughs) you I mean with mine my neighbors came over and just went bonkers and I mean, I play loud, hard style and hardcore music all the time and they don't care. <laughs> they came over because of this machine and just freaked yeah. out. Yeah, uh, I would imagine so. And you can't really deaden it. I mean, you need to build an entire room with soundproofing to actually yeah. try to get rid of the sound. It's, it's Enclosure. A, yeah, because it's, it's yeah. a high-pitched wine as well as, um, as, well as the, the tool cutting as well. Yeah. Have you seen the Carvey? I would love one of those Carveys. They're not, I don't know if they're out yet, but those are so cool. It's like the uh, it's like the desk it's a desktop version of the S, uh, X Carve kind of thing. Yeah, everyone's saying may the fourth be with you. <laughs> yeah, like may the fifth be with you. I have a day ahead. I'm in the future. Yeah, <laughs> may the fifth be with you. Yeah. Wow, you're living in the future. Yeah. Oh, Sparky's here. Oh, nice. How's it going, Sparky? <laughs> cool I think that's about it for the that's kickstarters cool. was there any yeah. others I, think. Uh, I don't know I think I, there was something I want to talk about but I don't remember what it was I'm going to just have another quick look at I can't help myself at the Olo campaign <laughs> oh my god you would yell at it some more <laughs> so oh. here we go their last update was the 21st of April where they said thanks for your support <laughs> and their comments, 18 days with no one talking to them. So I, um, <laughs> I encourage everyone to go onto your Twitter and go to Olo3D <laughs> and, and then tweet at them something like kind of tongue in cheek. So I was like, I was like, hey, Olo, are you still there? Your backers are waiting. And everyone's like, you know, I think it's a flop. <laughs> Yeah, the sounds of crickets is the sounds of crickets chirping is deafening. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! They, they haven't posted anything. They've just gone completely silent. Uh, it's yeah. just it's horrifying. Man, I, I, mean, I don't know. It's like maybe I don't think they. I don't think they're scamming people. I don't. I don't know. I just don't think that. I don't know if they ever thought that they could get this this quick or anything, or they could ever. I don't know. It's just no, I, it's a disaster. From what I what I understand about Kickstarter projects and the amount of effort that goes into deliverables, I it's going to end up like the Pirate Three D if they try to manufacture them. There's no way they can do it for the amount of money they raised. Like I think they were just trying to get that number of the most three D printers ever raised or something. But yeah, like hundred bucks, you you can't even sort of ship you know a box of rubbish from China if you're manufacturing <laughs> it for a hundred bucks. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's like the thing is, if it is a hundred dollars, I'll probably get, or I'll ask like a discounted unit, maybe like twenty five percent off, and I'll still, I'll, I'll maybe 
get one if it is actually going to become a thing, which seems unlikely, and I might die of old age before that happens. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just I'm still going to make a YOLO. Like, I'm still going to make my own. <laughs> yeah, and this is something that uh, that I've been talking about for some time now that I don't like where the 3D printing market is going. I feel like people are getting more obsessed with how cheap they can possibly make it than how ex- than how nice they can. You know, yeah. they're not setting. There's no set price point. Trying to get the best at that price point, it's like who can get the lowest possible price point. Oh, it's true. Yeah. And the, the trend is uh, basically ABS is going out of fashion because everyone's realized it's too hard to print, and they need to mm-hmm. make the machines more expensive to make it work. So they're just like, yeah. we're not even going to support ABS anymore. So the yeah. machines are getting cheaper. And it's like, in a lot of people who are 3D printing, like more than half the people who are 3D printing now are just 3D printing toys. And I, I mean that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I 3D print a lot of like trinkets and just like useless things yeah but uh it's like i don't know i almost feel like it's there are cooler things to do with a 3d printer than i don't know i don't know if i want to talk about this because i have you know like nine companion cubes but yeah still well, it's like i this, use them for testing <laughs> so that's nothing yeah wrong. yeah it's, this is my test print companion cube you know, yeah anything i'm gonna do film on a new slicer i print i print it in yeah yeah yeah, yeah. cool uh, any questions or something? That I think someone answer, asked. Yeah. Someone asked about the Flexion extruder. I haven't attached it to my One How Ooh. i Three yet. Um, it's over there. I literally have like twenty things I need to review. It's insane. So <laughs> I will get to that, it. That is so cool because like I, I have never actually print, been able to print in flexible filament. My one printer I have, or one printer that I use, is a Delta with just an insane, ridiculous uh, boat, like actual. This, the distance from the extruder to the hot end is just insane, you know. Um, but so and then my one how I mean you you've opened up a one how extruder before. Yeah. That gear that just shreds, uh, like it just like destroy it would destroy flexible filament. Yeah. I don't know how the gap, PLA the gap there though is what kills it. Like if there's a gap between yeah. the hot end and the gear, it just kinks instantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that gear is way, it has way too much pressure. Like the Flexion has four different levels of tension. So you can dial it all the way back to one, which is super light. So you can print like really low durometer, ge- like really flexible filaments, supposedly. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I think Pyro is saying I have a spool of Ninja Flex I never used. I think we all have spools of flexible filaments we've never used because they don't work. Yep, I have... Uh... <laughs> I have one right over there, and I'm considering just like signing it and giving it away when I hit 200 subs, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it's I. The thing is, I don't see a whole lot of application for just Ninja Flex. I see like flexible filaments, but like Ninja Flex, that's just like too flexible. And I don't know. It's just like, what do you think about Ninja Flex? Do you think it's really you need it that flexible? It's it's a specific use case. You can't print with a raft. You can't print with supports yeah. unless you use a different material so you yeah. if you want like a grommet or something that's actually flexible it's good like but i haven't seen anyone do something really practical with it except for james on x robots he's used flexible filaments for stuff like treads and things which is really neat mm-hmm. um and cool. his channel i think he uses the taz 5 i believe so if you're printing a three mil with flexible it's a little bit easier than printing 1.75 yeah, I would imagine, yeah, that, that'll make more sense, because, like, you know, I feel like if you just, like, scratch it a little bit, it wouldn't be as significant as, with, I guess, like, when like, the, the gears press against it, it's not as it's not as significant as, like, 1.75, because yeah. it's... It's less you know, likely less... to become, like, a wet noodle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Lostbot sent him a TAS-6, though, judging by, like, how much he uses his TAS-5. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... I mean, I, I have this this flexible film, and, and it's barely flexible. It's just, like, bendy, you know, but it's just, it's yeah. insane. Like, uh, I don't really understand the point of it. Like, it's so, it's not that much flexible than PLA, but my uh, printer would, would jam every 30 seconds. It's It was insane, so I don't know. I've seen a video of someone getting flexible filament to work on it, mm. on, on the one how, and I don't know how they did that without uh, modifying their extruder gear. There is there is a little uh, support you can print that goes underneath the gap that supposedly helps, hmm. which I saw. I haven't tried it yeah. though. 
I've been trying yeah, to get if it, if it buckles at all or if it like any anything cha if it's not in a perfect straight line right into the hot end then you're gonna have problems yeah, yeah you need a fully supported extruder which is difficult mm -hmm. yeah it's hard to do <laughs> you're playing with your, your little 3d prints <laughs> <laughs> cool yeah. well, I think that's probably good I mean you can answer a couple more questions I guess yeah I we'll probably have to start hitting uh -huh. off yeah let's see there's some questions someone asked so, CJ mentioned earlier something about uh, printing across multiple ZX values for Larry. There's some what uh, Topo Topo Labs were doing. I don't really know who that is. Or what that is, but um, yeah, I can send you a link to like a video of it printing or something. Um, it's like it's like a robotic arm, and it can go from like any axis. Yeah. I think if there's some that can actually go upside down and like print under it, and it's just insane. <clears throat> yeah, I did some experiments ages ago with printing upside down. And oh yeah, I saw that yeah. you like you took the printer and you like just, lifted just, it. Up. Just, I saw that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I found it didn't really change the print quality. Like um, if you're yeah. printing a sphere, it's more to do with the layers bonding to the previous layer rather than the actual gravity affecting it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it. If yeah, you're like to print uh, upside. I don't know how much that would help. Like my one how it just like shows you like um, I uh. Like th my one house bent, like the actual frame is just com is just bent. It came bent, which is annoying. Uh, so Shut what up. I did is I set <laughs> for one thing I had to set one side to um, to maximum and the other side to minimum, and then that still wasn't enough. So I actually had to like sh t t turn the threaded rods and get it to so like it's way higher on that side than the other side, and then it would work. And it works fine. It prints fine. Um, I suffered just a tiny bit of dimensional accuracy, unless it's not as, it's not as accurate. But um, other than that, it's, it's absolutely fine. It's it's really your relation from the print head to the uh, print yeah. bed. It's not like if it's tilted sideways or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It sucks that yours came bent. I mean, my my first generation one hat was a piece of crap. It's yeah, really not as good as the later later ones. But yeah, yeah. did you hear about the two point one? Yeah, the, I mean that belt problem should have been fixed it should never have happened it should have it should never even happen in the first one i don't <laughs> get it it's like it's they why? use they it's use cheaper so they use cheaper bearings basically yeah. they use the cheaper that was larger diameter than the um the proper i3 should have so it just touched and yeah just i don't know why how can someone in a factory be like yeah she'll be right that's fine <laughs> it'll be fine. it's fine it's touching but it's fine i don't get it i mean maybe just like the first shipment or something i don't know it's like that like i guess it would be understandable <laughs> Yeah. But like, it's it, you. It's been like it was like a year later that you released the the two, and then it's the same thing. I it's just it doesn't make sense. Like it's it would not be any more expensive. I just don't get it. No, no, it's yeah. it, so um, whatever. <laughs> one how D six. I have been talking about this printer nonstop. It is it. Di directly. It is a it's full metal, uh, Ultimaker V two plus. It, almost exactly, but it's a thousand dollars. It's insane. That's Ultimaker's not going to be happy with that. <laughs> yeah, made by one house. They're oh, they're probably going to get sued, but they're in China. And yeah, they you can't can, get I don't sued know. in China. It's it's there's yeah. no IP in China. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just how it is. Yeah, I mean uh, the Ultimaker's are just writing on the brand name. It's flashy, but it's just too expensive for what it is, in my opinion. It's just, yeah, can't compete. And I mean they're definitely good. It's just I. Th personally I think at least now there are better printers for the price yeah I think so I really think so and like um, I was at a trade show the other day and you know they had just these poor guys had MakerBot 5th gens on their stand and like <laughs> they're like 5,000 Australian dollars now <laughs> oh my god uh, they dropped their price from their like I was telling you about, you talked about this they dropped the price from their their replicator 2 mm. from $2,000 to 800 bucks you think like oh mm. that's a good price drop why are they still selling their printer though? yeah, it's yeah so why is cool. it's ancient it's a good printer it's, it's actually great for the time and it's honestly probably better than their new ones but it's like <laughs> I don't know it's just I don't know how they're still in business it's the name it's because they were so huge and I don't know they're just it's the name yeah uh, Rainy is asking, what's the largest 3D printer out there? That would probably be the Gigabot. That would be one of the largest um, sort of hobby, I guess, level ones. I mean, you're still mm -hmm. looking at $10,000 for a kit. Uh, but there is 
big Stratasys machines that need forklifts to be unloaded. Like the, uh, yeah. what's it called? The Fortis 800M, I think, is the Fortis 800. Literally needs a forklift to unload the bed. It's ridiculous. <laughs> hey, Joel's here. Oh, Joel, yeah. you made it right. We're just finishing up, dude. <laughs> yeah, and there's also the uh, the printer. Um, the, what's it called? Um, I kept thinking the name, but it will print in concrete. It can print houses and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like those are cool. I mean, I don't know if you call this a three D printer, really, but like it's it's well, yeah, very it's, it's sort of like a robotically controlled concrete crane yeah i suppose yeah <laughs> yeah sure but okay i'm gonna f- bef- i'm gonna send you the link to that what's that one called someone mentioned it it's the robotic arm printer oh yeah topo labs let me see if i can pull it up is this it i don't know oh joel's still at work oh poor joel <laughs> <laughs> uh Dude, he he works so hard. <laughs> he does. I don't know how he's how he works full time and how you're still, still does all up. other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> cool. Oh, maker arm. Yeah, uh, that looks. I'll just pull it up quickly while CJ's finding his thing. Mm-hmm. That looked pretty cool. Um, so they raised cash on Kickstarter, and it's meant to be like. This this kind of this kind of design is called a polar robot arm. So uh, it uses like rotational axes, not linear axes, to move the head around. Hmm. Which is pretty neat. I mean, polar polar robots yeah. are some of the fastest in industry. Like you see, ro- yeah, I've seen this. There's videos of like yeah. a pick and place polar robot, and it's going like, it's just bonkers. <laughs> um, but the issue with this type of platform is you've got, for example. On the inner area of the print volume, you get high resolution, but as you go out, you know, imagine as an arm stretches out, those yeah. dis- those discrete movements are further apart, so you lose resolution as you go out to the edge. So That's the true. mathematics behind it. it is absolutely insane to <laughs> try to make them yeah. run. Because that like, would that's pretty crazy. Actually, you probably you can get probably good Z, like probably good. You know, that probably wouldn't vary too much, but. That I would imagine you probably can't make it too big. You can't go too far. No, no, you can't um, go too big. I you- saw this. Uh, Barclays did a. Um, he did uh, Maker Fair coverage, and this was there. That's the only other, only other place I've seen it. Yeah, but, yeah, it looks pretty cool. You yeah. can have like a laser or a three D printer <clears throat> or things like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how robust it would be because the biggest issue with these designs is you've got all the weight on those those rotational axes. So they need to be super mm-hmm. robust. I don't know how this thing could could 3D print well. I don't, I don't see that. I don't, see I don't know. It's just I can see the laser cutter, but then it's it's just a super expensive and practical laser cutter. You yeah. know. <laughs> I would have preferred to see it as just a, like an industrial platform, like um, a low cost polar robot yeah. arm that has just like a gripper on the end or something, or like a, a like a mounting plate you can mount something to in a connection. Yeah. Um. They they wanted three three and a half. Sorry, three three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and they got four hundred and thirty. Which is mm-hmm. pretty good. But I mean it was a grand for the early bird. Ugh. Fair. Dang you yeah, that that I don't wanna <laughs> I don't know, because I don't want to hurt the company or anything. I don't what I say doesn't matter, no one listens to me, but uh, I just really don't see I don't know, I don't see the value in it really. I don't get I mean what's the what's the real I mean, you would think price, but you can get the same quality but like better. Yeah. Um for a cheaper price. I don't really get what the benefit of it is. No. It's you know. just it's just an interesting approach and a different mechanical linkage. But it's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, speaking of interesting, Jordan's saying the Rep at Morgan. Have you seen that? Have you seen the Morgans? I haven't. No. I'll uh, pull it up. It's pretty cool. I mean, the whole concept behind it is um, kind of polar, but I mean, it, I think the project kind of fizzled out. I uh, I haven't seen anything more on it since, but it was meant to be like a super low cost hmm. uh, 3D printer design. This is this is old oh. though. This is like three years old. Yeah. So I don't know where it went from there. Um, just going on from crazy rep wrap designs. There's the uh, the Lisa as well. <laughs> yeah, that looks cool. Which is uh, how much? What is it? What like cost to, to do? <laughs> how much are they saying it would cost? Uh, I think they said a few hundred for the the Morgan. Yeah. 
There's all That's sorts of cool. wacky designs. There's so many wacky uh, 3D printer concepts. I just, <laughs> I don't know if you can really beat Cartesian though. I'm a, I'm a Cartesian guy. Yeah. It's like if the Cartesian and RepRap are obviously like are like different. Cartesian is where like you have like X and Y connected like on the top, and then the Z plate just moves up. Yeah, there's um, a few different. Con- there's a few different. Yeah combinations like you got mm-hmm. the hbot and xy uh configs where you've got the the xy constrained to each other with two two step motors and then you just have the bed drop by itself without anything on it yeah that seems to be the most popular now like the up boxes uses, uses that the craft craft bot uses that um th- then yeah. you get weird stuff like the lt maker i don't even know what that technically is it's just lots of rods yeah. lots of things that move <laughs> So RepRap, like RepRap is like, I don't know if it's technically under, like Cartesian, some people say that's like a whole, like a genre of printers, I guess you could say, like a whole a group, like a like, RepRap is under Cartesian, like I don't know like what you call them, but like, no, RepRap yeah, is I don't, just I mean, the I would, name for that whole open source movement, yeah. you could do anything and call it a that's RepRap derivative. Yeah. Um, Where that RepRap is just like, uh, when the Z plate moves, X moves that way, and then Z is also up by the gan- like the like a gantry on the attached to the X. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's sort of referencing the early like the Prusas and that, um, the really yeah. fairly terrible early rap raps. <laughs> um, they used to the first one I think it was the Huxley. It had a uh, had four li- like threaded threaded rods with a timing belt around it, and then that would control your bed up and down. So like in terms of keeping your bed level from the start to the finish is like impossible <laughs> because yeah. something would skip or move <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I don't worry about it, about, a, about a, a, the plate moving that much you know it's it, this is it's leveling you know yeah <clears throat> but interesting yeah the I heard and one of the one of the other benefits other than the um the the belt on the one v2.1 um is that I heard it's or I saw that like it it will stay level they claim that it'll like stay exactly the uh, like, you know, as level as, as it was, you know, when you actually leveled it, which is what it should be anyway. Supposedly. Uh, but somehow it doesn't work like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. And it also says, like, it's easier to level. So it's, it's like, bigger, it's, like, just, like, these um, nuts you, like, twist on it. Like, the, the things that everyone, like, the first thing everyone 3D prints in their one, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, can't, I haven't actually found any, any pictures so far of the 2.1. They, they, they're, the release that people posted on facebook had just pictures of the two it's interesting yeah it's like it's like like a week old i think yeah something like that (laughs) um yeah it it looks nicer like the um uh the actual like the print head they actually like the the whole thing looks nicer because it has like the the thinner things on the rods yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's very cool so i'm trying to find that robotic arm um, That's right. You might have to do it next time. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's about been about an hour, so probably start polishing it up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Well, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and joining me and CJ talking about Kickstarter yeah. projects and then just random everything. <laughs> it was <laughs> fun. Uh, yeah. If you are not subscribed to me, you can just click the subscribe link, and that would be awesome. But you probably are. And if you're not subscribed to CJ, you can follow CJ Printing. I'll put a link yeah. in the screen description and you can go check CJ's channel out because he's only up and awesome. coming and he would love you to go check it out, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, you would. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and in terms of what I've been doing, I've been taking sort of like a two-week break off while I've been away and sick and stuff. So I will be returning with lots of reviews on Maker's Muse very soon. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All, All right. right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. See ya.